the American Broadcasting Company Radio Network presents Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Mission to daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are aboard the Terra 5, rushing toward the planet Saturn. Suddenly, another ship fires at them. It was close, Commander. He's getting drained with those torpedoes. They fire basic action. Hey, why don't we get this off on his own medicine? Fire a few blasts with our space cannon. We can't see. We've got to think about those people in Saturn City. If we destroy Drokov, we destroy the only person who can cure that epidemic. <laughs> We can't fight back. So all broke off has to do is keep firing until he hits us. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting story, The Weed of Despair. <laughs> better schools build better communities. All schools that have large, airy classrooms, well-equipped, and even more important, they should have an adequate teaching staff. Many of our schools fail to reach these standards, Three out of every five classrooms in the nation are overcrowded, and there's a shortage of 72,000 elementary teachers. The solution is more action by more people in more places. Join and work with local civic groups and school boards who are actively seeking to improve educational conditions. Find out how citizens in other communities are taking action to improve their schools. For such background information and for guidance, simply write to Better Schools, 2 West 45th Street, New York 36, New York. Help our schools keep pace with the birth rate. Now, back to today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Weed of Despair. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are aboard the Terra 5, bound for the planet Saturn to investigate a strange anomaly that has afflicted Saturn City. Leading doctors of the United Planets are unable to explain the cause of the sickness, which leaves its victims suffering from a strange and anxiety. Many of the city's leaders have been affected by the spreading epidemic, and Buzz fears that immediate action is needed to prevent a serious disaster. Commander, if the doctors can't do anything about that sickness, what are we supposed to do? Our job is to keep the people of Saturn City from hurting themselves and others. Well, I've read in the medical reports, sir, nobody gets violent. It's the opposite of that. They, they just sit around and do and worry. Exactly. Every motion seems a tremendous effort for them. Sickness progresses, they become afraid to take any sort of action for fear it might be the wrong thing to do. Then it's all in their mind, has it That doesn't make the effect of the sickness any less real. I still don't see how we can. We're setting up a temporary camp outside the city in a small atmosphere shell. In case Saturn City has to be quarantined, we can rotate skeleton crews in key positions and operate the city by remote control. We should reach Saturn in about two hours, and we're just over the orbit of the sixth moon, Titan. Titan, the sixth moon of Saturn, is the only satellite in the solar system with a natural atmosphere. Prospectors like Mort Stocker and Reese Haviland, with little money for spacesuits or small atmosphere shells, take advantage of this fact in their search for valuable minerals. Their small, powerful surface truck roars over Titan's rough terrain. Nice kid right over that hill, Reese. I think you're rocking. Flashes in the sky. Flashes over the hill. I guess I saw him. Green flash. Yeah, yeah. The polka dots. Yeah. No, there wasn't any polka dots. Like I told you, I was looking out the window of our shack when the first flash came out in space. Meteor. And then several minutes later, the next one came. Once it exploded and hit the ground. If it exploded, it isn't going to do us any good, even if it was solid uranium. Look. Look, you can see it now. That's where it landed. That, that big scar in place a quarter of a mile ahead. Oh, I see it. It's all the and the story. But it wasn't a meteor, and a meteor we'd have dug a crater. Something's been burned, dude. Something burned hot in it. Hey, something burned. Look out at the man, lying on the ground. Oh, I see you hot I didn't have to run right over him. I thought I would have to see what's wrong with him. Throw him over, Mark. Can't tell where he's bleeding or not. Right here in the lane. Whatever exploded over there, a chunk of it hit the program. Hmm, hmm, hmm. He's alive, all right. Hey, I calculate this man into the truck. They rush into the shack and box him up. The 
Two prospectors speed back to their shack to the injured man. While they're dressing his wounds, the stranger regains consciousness. Now you just lie there in the bunk and take it easy. I'll have you patched up for you. Oh, you gentlemen paid my life. I was sure I was finished. Oh, you're going to be all right. Hey, Richard. I'll be all right. Well, a couple of miles away, he picked up. How did you help me find it? I saw the price the media made him. It was the media, wasn't it? No, it was it my ship, my private crew. Something went wrong with the reactor. I managed to sit down and get out before it blew up. Frightened must have cut my leg. You were lucky at that. By the way, my name is Reeve Havlin. My beetle brad friend here is Mort Stocker. Or prospectors, in case you haven't guessed. I'm very glad to know you, gentlemen. I'm, uh, my name is Yellow, and I'm a convenient. Yes, I can't apologize. Uh, it's kind of a fact that you were saying. Thank you. I'm afraid I didn't make myself quite clear. I wish it was growing time. Flowers, bees, and uh, Well, Mr. Gowan, you won't find any plants on Titan. I didn't expect you. My landing here was kind of natural. I say. You gentlemen probably get around a lot. Maybe you can help me. Would you be good enough to bring me my jacket? I'm oh, sure I can. I'm searching for a certain type of plant. I need to be exact. Yeah, that you'd know it. Well, I might. There's a jacket. Thank you. Well, that's too fancy. I ever talked to quite like these before. Uh, it's a semi-official uniform. Here's what I wanted to show you. These pictures. Did you ever see one of these plants? Uh, no. I think I would Let me see them more. Looking for a mangy-looking weed like this? I admit it's not very attractive, but it uh, has interesting medical uses. Think carefully. Have you ever seen it? Well, as you can see, it's soft as a grayish yellow. Once a year, it grows a big purple ball of pond to its store. Uh, see, you probably call it. No, Mr. Gelman, I have never seen anything like this. Neither have I. And this is what you're looking for, huh? Hey, you're stranded on Titan without a ship, Mr. Gelwin. You'd be glad to notify the Saturn Space Patrol. Uh, no. I mean, uh, I don't bother. Well, it's, uh, we got a paper phone in the next room. The fact is, I'd feel rather foolish asking for a rescue ship. We'll probably be going to Saturn for supplies in a day or so. I'll go in with you. We don't have a ship here on Titan, Mr. Gelwin. Well, you see, we're prospecting uh, on the cuff, so to speak. Big company advances supplies and equipment. Every 30 days, we send a ship here to drop off more supplies. Then we'll pick up samples of water. You won't be late till the ship comes. You're welcome. And uh, how, how long will that be? The last ship was here two days ago. It'll be uh, 28 days from next time. Well, not that one of you. We've got plenty of food. You're welcome to stay with us. You know, you just lie down there and take it easy while I rustle up some food for you. Something pretty strange in the group up there. Dark smear on the ground. Down there on Titan. Yes, I see. And it's perfectly wrong. The star there, right? Yeah, but I think it's looks very nice. It's pretty good at there. Good question, huh? Titan Station, Team 19, calling Space Patrol. Emergency. Attention, all Space Patrol units. Manicori aboard Terra 5, the Titan Station, T19. Go ahead. This is Reed Pablin, Titan T19. I want to report it. Boring. That's right, Havlin. I'm 11 DUs off Titan. What's the trouble? My partner and I prospect Inspector 7R on Titan. Somebody stole our surface truck. We're stranded. We're right over Inspector 7R now, Commander. Can you give me more details, Havlin? Sure. Uh, a couple of hours ago, a spaceship exploded just over the hill from our shack. My partner and I picked up this guy and brought him back. Space was searched. We fetched him out. Say a spaceship exploded? Well, it's... How long ago did this happen? It's, uh, not more than 20 minutes ago. He couldn't have gone very far. But me and my partner are friends. Well, take it easy, Havlin. We're covering the whole area by viewscope right now. We can't forget that front back commander. It's our bread and butter. Stand by that space for me. Keep in touch. Hurry out. Commander, I took a chance.
this is a your land. When closer observation proves the moving object to be a surface truck, Buzz lands the terrified near the blackened area. By now, the surface truck has stopped near some large rocks. Buzz and Happy descend the landing ladder and advance toward the truck. A man in strange clothing turns from a crevice in the rock and stands with arms folded and waiting. Your radar. Of course you can. This harmless looking belt is radiating a field of one hundred days. Commander! <laughs> we'll return to our exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. One of the great men of our time, Dr. Albert Schweitzer. For the past 40 years, Dr. Schweitzer has dedicated his life to his medical mission in French Equatorial Africa devoting all his personal income to the support of 700 patients suffering from leprosy, malaria, sleeping sickness, and other dread diseases of the jungle. Dr. Schweitzer has just reached his 80th birthday. As a tribute, many Americans will send him a gift through care because help for Dr. Schweitzer's hospital is one continuing part of CARE's World Health Program. Your contribution will be gratefully received and carefully spent in the service of humanity. Send it to CARE. New York 16, or to any local care office. Specify that it is for Dr. Schweitzer's hospital in Africa. Now back to our exciting space patrol adventure, Weed of Despair. Buzz and Happy landed on Titan, sat in six moon near a strange, scarred area where a spaceship disintegrated in an explosion. While questioning Jeldon, the pilot who survived the disaster, Buzz found evidence that the ship is from another solar system. Suddenly, Yelvin stunned the space patroller with a brain-numbing field that radiated from his belt. Now, Buzz and Happy find themselves in the control compartment of the Terra 5, with Yelvin standing over them. Now, if your heads are clear, I want you to listen. Understand? We've got our weapons. We can't do anything else. I'm from Talorna, a star system about 80 light years from your solar system. I'm an officer in our Galactic Peace Commission. It's on the order of your space patrol. I can point out a few differences. Perhaps. I'm here to capture an escaped criminal. And if you're the law, I'd hate to meet the criminal. I know you're angry. But it was necessary for the welfare of your own people. So to help people, you put us out cold with that radiation field. You plan to take me to your state school headquarters, you said. It would take time, and there's none to spare. Not when I have a lead on Doka. He is Doka. The criminal I'm after. After he fled from Tuama, I trailed him to the Procyon system. And then here. I'd intercepted a hyperspace signal from him when my ship developed trouble. I had to land on Titan. I was 
destroy my own ship, so Brokaw couldn't stop it. Well, what does his Brokaw do that's so dangerous? He brings entire planets under his control. How does he work? I want to show you some pictures. Did you ever see a plant like this anywhere in your solar system? I said, I'm sorry. How about you, Hopper? Oh, yes, sir. I think so. This weed is probably the most dangerous plant in the universe. It looks harmless, but just a few of them can pollute the atmosphere for miles around. You mean it's poison? Why not in the ordinary physical sense? Its effect is emotional or psychological. You see this purple sack, the pod? Mm-hmm. When that pod bursts, billions of microscopic spores are released into the air. Many of the spores are breathed by human beings with strange sicknesses to these. What kind of sickness? The great lassitude, the fatigue. The victim is overcome with a sense of hopelessness. And nothing seems worthwhile. Then comes a horrible anxiety, a formless, baseless worry, and a sense of despair. Saturn City. That's exactly what's happening in Saturn City. But what is Brokaw's purpose? How can he profit by it? Brokaw also has the only cure for this sickness. When your scientists have tried every possible remedy and failed, and the government and its citizens become panicky, and Brokaw will offer his cure for an enormous cost. But there is a cure, a positive, definite cure. Yes. Tell us what it is. With your help, our scientists could prepare it and rush it to Saturn City. And it's not as easy as that, Commander. Years ago, the government of Columbia destroyed every weed on the planet where it originated. The remedy is destroyed with the weed. How? Oh. You see, a species of wasp feeds on a substance secreted by the stalk of the plant. When the weeds are killed, the wasp had no more food and died out. So what's the wasp got to do with the cure? An extract is made from the honey of the wasp. That substance counteracts the effects of the force, and only Brokaw has this extra. And that's right, Commander. And the supply of the plant. Then you're willing to join forces with us to capture Brokaw? Not only willing, but eager to find it. It means our ship and your knowledge. The first is that truck you want to borrow from the two prospectors. How far away is that shot? About one cool. That would be less than two miles from your measurement range. I'll space upon the prospectors and tell them where the truck is. I'll tell them I've arrested the man. Well, that's fine, Commander. The sooner we go after Drokov, the better. So where do we start looking for him? Well, I only know he's somewhere in this part of your city. I'm going to head for Saturn City and make it to him finally. Prepare for blast off, Hap. I'll contact Mort Stocker. Blasting off from the sixth moon was set a vector for the planet Saturn. Now the terrified is a few hundred BU in the outer perimeter of Saturn's ring. The magnificent sight commander. Those rings on Saturn, yes. They are beautiful, Daddy. Really. And from this angle, the rings look smooth and flat. One might even be tempted to try to land on them. Well, if you tried it, your ship would be chewed to pieces in a fraction of a second. Those rings are made up of tiny fragments of rock whirling around Saturn at about ten miles a second. Commander, look at the rear view scope. There's a ship right on our tail. It's on a collision course, but we'd better warn him. Try to cruise, sir. I can tell about it now. He's firing at us. Well, what's he lobbing space torpedoes at us for? Doesn't he know this is a space patrol ship? I think he does, Happy. I'm the one he wants to get. You? But who would want to... Oh, Brokaw. Yes. Commander, do you mind if I try to contact him? Go ahead, Gelwin. Brokaw, this is Gelwin of the Galactic Peace Commission, Paloma Division. Brokaw, do you hear me? Yes, Gelwin. I've been waiting for you. How did you know I was aboard the commander's ship? I intercepted Corey's conversation with the prospector. I have been watching Titan since your own ship landed there. I have also overheard your hyperspace message to Paloma. Corey knows that you're responsible for what's happening to the people in Saturn City. When you show up with the remedy, you'll be captured. That's right, Drogoff. You won't be able to profit by your extortion plot. I disagree, Commander. You have not seen an entire city in the grip of an epidemic of despair. When the sickness really takes hold, your United Planet government will do anything to obtain the remedy, at any cost. If that's the case, what will you gain by destroying us? Gerwin knows too much about me. You two working together could cause me some annoyance. Now, Commander, further conversation is useless. If you'll excuse me, I will resume the pleasant task of exterminating you. Well, there's no use of feeling to his finer sensibility. That's right, Commander. Well, oh, that was close, Commander. He's getting his range with his torpedo. Why don't we give him some of his own medicine? If we give him a few glasses with our space well, cannon... we can't. Got to think about those people in Saturn City. If we destroyed Drokov, we destroyed the only person who can cure that epidemic. Well, he's gaining on us, sir. Smoking rockets we can't fight back, so all Drokov has to do is keep firing until he hits us. I'm changing back to half. We're heading for Saturn's ring. But sure, Drokov can still follow us. He won't follow us where we're going. 
Taking the ship right into the ring. What? Why those chunks of rock will turn the ship into a sieve? We'll go in on a tangent. The choice between getting hit with a thousand fragments or one torpedo. Commander, you aren't really going to go into that ring. Yes. And to nudge our way in gently. We'll match our velocity to the particles in the outer rim. We'll be riding along with them, sort of rolling with a pendant. It might work, Commander. Have to run the repel array about one tenth pound. Yes, sir. We're going to grab a ride on Saturn's merry-go-round. When those particles seem to be standing still, we'll pull into the stream. We're almost at match velocity now, Commander. The artillery ought to keep off any particles that come too close. Rokoff's still firing at us. Uh-oh. He's changed sector. Good. That means he won't try to follow us into the ring. Well, those particles are all around us now. They look like they're still to be fixed outside our viewport. Like a swarm of bees. And if we don't disturb those bees, we won't get stung. Now the trick is to work our way deeper into the ring. Can you do it, sir? If we increase our velocity gradually, if we move toward the inner part of the ring, it ought to work. Then you're going to spiral your way in, clear through the ring. No. We'll stay in long enough to convince Brokoff that we're finished and come out through the top. I bet he's already sure that we're full of holes. Gellin, we've got to cut in the hyperspace receiver. If Brokoff keeps in close touch with his Confederates back in Kelowna, he may learn something about it. Nothing on the receiver so far. I'll try another frequency. All right, Gellin. I think we can work our way out of the ring now. I've got something. There's some code. I can't make it out. Is it people armor? I don't know. Yes, I'm certain of it. Gellin is dead. We do not have to worry about his meddling anymore. Okay. We're not only rid of Gellin, but the commander of the United Planet Space Patrol as well. The fools dived into a ring of fragments that whirled around the planet Saturn. They must have been ground to pieces. Good work, Commander, just like you said. I've got more good news, Ormark. The situation in Saturn City is desperate. Half the population has become so depressed by the effects of the weed spores that they aren't working. Communications, transportation, power, they're all disrupted. The accident rate is way up. I'll wait a few days for real panic to set in. Then I'll appear with my magic remedy. I'll ask a million credits first. And if the officials quibble or delay, my price will go up. I've got quantities of the remedies stashed all over the solar system. There's a supply on Saturn moon number nine in the lunar-type spaceship, all earmarked for Saturn City. The remedy will stay there until they meet my price. I'll keep you informed, Ormark. Go out. out. The lunar-type ship on the ninth moon. You can remember if you only knew what part of the moon. The ninth moon of Saturn. Small, only 200 miles in diameter. It shouldn't take us long to find the ship, unless it's hidden. We'll spiral out of this rock swarm and head for the ninth moon. A few moments later, the Terra 5 emerges from the outer rim of the whirling rings of Saturn, like a silver spark from a spinning grindstone. Buzz sets a vector for Saturn's ninth moon. Then comes the long, patient search at the surface of the tiny satellite. Take six times around, Commander. It'll take about 12 more to cover the surface completely. Every inch of that moon's surface looks just like the next. Commander, look. The right edge of the view stick. That a rock? Yeah, it's too smooth for a rock. Increase the sensitivity, Hank. Yes, sir. I think it's a good wrap. Lunar tight ship. Into your space suits. We're going to land. Buzz sets the Terra 5 down on the surface of the moon. Then, in space suits and with ray guns ready, they advance toward the small ship. There possibly isn't anyone aboard, and we can't afford to take chances. We may have trouble getting into the ship, Commander. Zokov probably locked the hatch. I've thought of that. The Palmer Court will do the trick. Now you two wait here. I'll go up the ladder first. Get there. Locked, all right. A couple of blasts of the torch will take care of that. All right, come aboard. Yes, sir. Let's try the storage compartment first. Well, it won't take long to search this ship. Let's start with that captain. Well, there are small containers here, but I can't read the label. My native language, Kalama. Well, they're mostly ordinary chemicals. Yeah. Remedies will lead to despair. Hey, wonderful! But it's just a small bottle. 
there are thousands of people in Ann Saturn City. This will be enough. Fortunately, the remedy can be diluted millions of times and still be effective. But how can we get it to the people? That's a good question. The nature of the sickness itself is working against them. The victims haven't any initiative or any desire to get well. They won't cooperate because they can't. They wouldn't show up for treatment. And we'll have to find people that aren't sick and train them to administer the treatment. That's no problem. Merely drinking water with a diluted solution in it will affect the cure. Yeah, but remember that old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Only in this case, uh, we can't even lead the people to water, though. There's another way. Gelman, what if this concentrate were added to the city's water supply? Would it be strong enough to work? I think so. In fact, I'm sure of it. Just that small bottle for thousands of people? Yes, sir. What we have here will take care of a city up to half a million in population. Then we're safe. Be sure that we can reach every man, woman, and child in the Senate City, and provided they aren't too bored with life to, to get up and get a drink of water, don't worry. The advanced stages of the sickness, no matter how little the victims are, one desire remains. One drive that will stir them to effort. Sir, you'll save them. All right, then. We'll blast off and get this remedy to Saturn City. Then we'll go after the drunk off. A preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Boys and girls, there's a wonderful way for you to get the things you want. Say you want a new bike or a camera or whatever it is. Well, the way to get it is the United States Savings Bond. Now, here's the plan. You put your dimes and quarters, a part of your money, into your school savings plan. You might want to save cash or fill up a savings stamp album, which holds $18.75 worth of stamps. That's enough to buy a $25 savings bond. Just get started on a thrift habit, and first thing you know, you can buy the things you need with your own money. You'll have the fun of watching your dimes and quarters go into dollars. Dollars all your own. Again, the important thing is to be sure you take advantage of your school savings plan each week. You'll find it's lots of fun and smart, too. Now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy have become infected with a dangerous, weakening sickness. and are frantically searching a laboratory on Venus, hoping to find the one medicine that will cure them. Don't get some of that solution soon. We'll be of no use to ourselves, eh? No use to right now I'm just going on my own momentum. Huh. Okay. Top shelf. A bottle. Oh yeah. Like I said. That's your limit. I'll be careful with that. Uh, probably all there is in the whole place. If we can only get it to the ship, I'll drop out of the Maybe it's broke out and he's got a blast gun. <laughs> Be with us next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, The Fugitive from Talorma. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Ken Mayer, Bela Kovac, and Norman Jolly. Dick Wesson speaking. Don't forget to tune in next Saturday at the same time for exciting adventure on Space Patrol! This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide.